In today's photo deconstruction, I'm going to create an image with three gels, but I'm going to show you a really unexpected way to use gels for your background. Hey everybody, Lindsay Adler here, and as you know, I love gels. I use them all the time. Sometimes it's for really saturated poppy results. Other times it's for just a kiss of color to the shadows. And so in today's photo deconstruction, I want to break down one of the images I created recently at my Magic of Gels workshop. Now I have a Magic of Gels video tutorial, a lighting recipe guide, and I often do hands-on workshops. So for this particular setup, what's really interesting is not just the modifiers I used or the color gels I chose, but the very unusual way that I gelled the background light to give me a high key result, but also colorful rim lights. All right, so don't know what that means? Let's pop over and look behind the scene. All right, so in the behind the scenes here, you can see that there are two lights in the front of my subject, one on either side, and then there's also a background light. But the background light is a softbox directly behind my subject. Every single one of the lights in the scene has a gel on it. So how am I achieving a pure white background, a high key result? All right, so here's what we have going on. Directly behind my subject, I have a Profoto D2 with a three by four foot softbox. And that softbox is directly up behind my subject. If you've watched some of my tutorials, you know that this is a technique that I use often. And the reason I like this technique is it allows me to have a pure white background and have that single light wrap around my subject to give kisses of light on the jawline, on the neck, wrapping around my subject, uh, even though I'm only using one light. What's really nice about it is it's taking the place of multiple strobes. Because if you think about it, if I needed to light a white background, I'd need you know, the white background, but then one or two lights on that background. And then if I wanted rim lights, well, I'd need at least one light from either side. And so that starts to get to be like four different strobes just for a high key background and rim lights. In this case, taking a three by four foot softbox and putting it up right up against the back of my subject takes the place of multiple strobes. It helps me achieve that goal. But here is the trick. In this case, if you look at the original photo, you see that she has beautiful kisses of teal light on the side of her face, her jawline, her arms, but the background is pure white. So how did I do that? I placed a teal gel inside that three by four foot softbox and I overexposed so when that softbox goes so bright that it becomes overexposed, it appears pure white, but the light hitting my subject, reflecting off of her, that is still teal. This is one of my favorite tricks to be able to have beautiful color wrapping around the subject without having to have many different strobes added to the equation. So that is background light, light number one. Now on the left-hand side of the camera, I have a large umbrella with diffusion and I used a cyan gel. And then on the other side of the frame, I did the exact same thing, except for with an extra large umbrella, could have been a large, and I used a magenta gel. So basically, she's got a teal behind, then on one side of her face, she's got cyan, and the other, magenta. And so that builds in my soft three light setup. Now real quick, let's talk about the camera settings. I'm shooting with a Canon R5, and I was using the Canon 24 to 105. I shot at 1 200th of a second, F8, ISO 400. Reason being is I didn't need to shoot a wide aperture. I'm not trying to blow out the background and uh, I'm shooting mostly with 1000 watt second strobes. So I was shooting more around F8. I often shoot F8 or F11. Okay, so let's actually see how close I got this in camera. Let's pop over to the final shot and let's actually back up to the raw. So this is the raw image in camera with zero adjustments at all. And so here's what you see. So first of all, you can see that that background is almost pure white. It's not quite, it's, it's got a little bit of teal to it and that's because there is a teal gel on it, but we're going to fix that and not with a lot of Photoshopping. Instead, we're gonna fix it with contrast. So hold tight for that. Uh, next, what do we see? Well, we see that there's that beautiful kiss of teal on her jawline, kind of kissing over her shoulders a little bit. Next, uh, we've got the blue cyan on the left, the magenta on the right, and you can see they kind of mix in the middle, but more or less we have distinct ranges of color. So now I was shooting tethered and was shooting into capture one. And all I did is I went in and I increased the contrast. I popped the whites and I increased the clarity. And this is the result that I got. So you can see that the image has a lot more pop to it. Uh, the colors are more defined. And now the background is pure white. And it's not like I had to brighten the image up or Photoshop it a lot. 
It's just that increase in contrast and pop of the whites that pushes it to give me that clean, high-key background. Okay, now looking at this image, Honestly, it's fine in camera. It's beautiful. Uh, her skin looks beautiful because I'm using soft light sources. She had a beautiful highlighter of makeup on her cheekbones. You can see that the light on the left-hand side of the frame is picking up that highlight. She's got big, beautiful catch lights in her eyes. So as is, there really isn't much that I need to retouch. However, my style is really clean and poppy, and this image is meant to be very clean and poppy. So I went in, I cleaned up a few things. So you can see here, one of the things I did is uh, liquefy down her shoulders. The reason I did that is I thought it made her look more elegant, uh, a little bit longer lines. And if you can tell in this shot, my camera angle is about at her eye level. And by shooting at that slightly higher or eye level, it actually will make her neck look a little bit shorter. One of my favorite techniques is when I'm photographing beauty is I get low and I shoot up. And the reason I do that is it elongates the neck, but I didn't do that in this case. And so lowering the shoulders with liquefy helps to create more elegant lines. I also thought that the earrings in the back part of the frame were a little bit distracting, so I removed them. And then I also did just a little lift uh, and kind of made all of the lines a little bit smoother. So here's where we started and here's where we ended. Most of that is contrast and clarity. Now, another consideration is you may want to use different color gels. Like you don't have to use teal, cyan, and magenta. But when you switch them up, something you should be careful of is sometimes the color that you put on that background light, uh, not all of them work. So for example, I found that if I use orange and red, it's really hard to get that, that soft box to a pure, pure white. A lot of times it'll start to look kind of yellow orange, which is fine. You could use that creatively, or you may have to do just a little bit more cleanup in post-processing. I think a lot of times when people use gels, they use them in a way that's really poppy, maybe low-key, uh, really, really saturated and mysterious. But you can also use gels, as you can see here, for images that are higher key. Maybe you're using more subtle colors. Uh, you're using it for a little bit more of an upbeat image. So I challenge you to think outside of the box and how color gels can change your photography. Now keep in mind, if you want to learn a more about using color gels in your work, be sure to check out the magic of gels. I have a video tutorial, a lighting recipe guide, and I give you not only a really deep understanding of how to achieve super saturated colors and color theory, but also a lot of different lighting setups to get you started and get you inspired. Now, if you want to see the gear that I use to make this image, be sure to check out the links in the description below and visit Adorama.com. If you want to see more tutorials from me, visit Learn With Lindsay, or of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel. See you next time, guys.